and welcome to DCS World and my another my alternate attempt to stream so I haven't streamed in a while truth truth is I've had some um, let's just say I took a very long break from it and decided to come back to it and stream it on DCS so it's a very simple thing I'm going to just hop into this plane and let's see what trouble we can cause. It's a training mission I made a long time ago and I still use. As you can see it's a MiG-21. Well I hear it's, it's colored in the colors of the Czech Republic. No, well it's officially said the Czech Republic but it's in Russian colors. Doesn't really matter. It's just a plane after all. So let's start her up. We have... Let's see if I need to rearm because I'm not sure these missiles to actually I think I might have uh, SAR missile well uh, semi-glided air-to-air -air missiles on it so let's start her up let's put on these transformers one two three generators main pop service pump Auxiliary pump, engine APU, and extinguisher. Unlock the throttle. And start the engine. I'm gonna wait for it to spool up, then I'm gonna turn on the rest of the systems. This is the famous MiG 21. It's literally a missile with wings. Here's the engine RPM going up. Engine stabilized. Now I'm going to start up the rest of the systems. This other stuff. I'm gonna set my NDB system to channel three. I'm gonna set my radio navigation already to channel fourteen. Flaps to take off position to take off position and poof cockpit closed pressurized I'm going to align my gyros uh, set my altimeter to airfield altitude I'm gonna already set the here to well the weapons panel which is located right here to pylon one the gun side and radar to standby uh, I just have it mapped to some controls but that's about it okay and I guess we can go I'm not gonna use the ATC system it's not bad in DCS, but it's not a seller either. So this is actually a very simple thing. Taxiing, you just push the throttle forward and you use differential braking to brake left and right. So press the brake stick, which is here on the stick and press your rudder pedals and the plane should steer. 
request takeoff. Oops, so I was not paying attention. <coughs> oh, seriously. Ah, let's restart the mission. I, I was not paying attention where I was going. So. Yeah, that should be very easy. The startup takes less than a minute, so... Okay, let's pick up this MiG here. But, uh, there's also a trainer, but... Okay, let's boot her up. Okay, I did set everything to on. Unlock the throttle. Engine is starting up. You can already hear it in the background. I'll wait for it to stabilize, then I'm going to turn on the rest of the systems. So, I've had to restart the mission, but the main goal is to intercept a couple of uh, harmless MiG-23s that are just flying around to see if I still um, remember how to use the weapon systems on the MiG-21, specifically the air-to-air -air missiles. They should be fairly easy. I'm already just setting up the weapons panel. Okay, engine is stable. Now you literally have to turn off every single system manually. Okay, flaps to take off position, let's center those gyros. Alright, hello, hello. Flight data recorder, yeah, let's do this also. Radar to standby, okay. Let's close. Lock and pressurize. Okay, I think it's ready to go. Flaps are in takeoff position. And uh, let's set the RSPN system to channel 14, de -de 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 -de. 1 and 2, radio navigation to RSPN, and this to channel 1, 2, 3. Okay, now I think it's good to go. But this is how quickly you can start up a MiG-21. Uh, it's, it's supposed to be in the air in less than a minute. Well, I mean at least ready to taxi in less than a minute. So. The hissing sound you hear is the uh, pneumatic brake system on the MiG-21. Now there's one thing we forgot to set, is the minimum minimums for altitude, which is 200 meters. So when we land it, the plane will 
warn us when we are 100 meters above the ground. That's your radar altimeter. I'm taxiing at about 70-ish well, percent, 60, 70-ish percent RPM. I have one external fuel tank, so about four tons of fuel. By the way, this thing burns through fuel like literally. A kitten drinks the hot milk, the warm milk. It's So weapons-wise, I have a couple of uh, K-13s and a couple of R-3Rs, I think. Well, the first ones are heat seekers. The second ones are the 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 the, the um, radar guided missiles. Yes, this thing has radar guided missiles. Well, semi-active radar guided, but you know they exist. Now, AWACS doesn't actually work, I do not know why. Overlord, 1-1, one, one. in field, 1-1, one, one. request picture. Yeah, well, but probably it's just not working, so... He's somewhere up there at 15,000 feet. Yeah, a bit about the MiG-21, well this thing requires very high speed to take off and land because of the short delta wings, so yeah, it's, it's a, bit of a, a bit of a quirky bird. So the more you squeeze the brakes, the sharper it turns. That's that's the whole deal with it. We need to make sure it goes forward straight. Okay. I think we are ready to go. So what I'm going to do is to Hold on to the brakes. I'm gonna advance the throttle to about 90%. Sorry, I'm a little bit sleepy. 90%. And I'm gonna release. Apologies for my alarm. Uh, advanced to, to full afterburner. Speed's coming up at about 350. I'm going to 300. I'm going to start rotating. Oh shit! This is going in all directions. Okay, there we go. It went up. Gear up. I'm gonna keep the afterburner till about 600 kilometers an hour. Trying to get as high as possible. Flaps up. Get lever to neutral. Uh, that means I'm crossing the outer mountain, outer marker of the runway, or inner marker. 550 kilometers an hour. 600 almost. I'm gonna level off and get off the burner. Keep about 90, above 95 percent RPM, and continue climbing. I'm about 2,000 meters-ish, let's see. No, about 1,000 meters, so 3,000 feet. If you're used to feet, this uses meters, so. 
I'm climbing at a gentle almost five degrees angle of attack and uh, VSI is right there I'm going about 15 meters per second okay and I think I'm gonna do my turn here I'm gonna go on the burner to accelerate My targets are, so, I know, I know they're somewhere to the east, but we'll need to find them, so. Uh, I've already eaten to, through almost a ton of fuel. about to the west two seven zero Now I'm going to get off the burner. And continue my climb. That's a radar scope. Let's put it back to standby. I just keep flinging it on and off because uh, the radar itself is alcohol cooled and once the coolant runs out, the, bl the bloody radar becomes useless. This is very similar to all the early mix, they had uh, alcohol cooled radars. And now we're steady at about 650 kilometers an hour and slowly climbing. So I'm literally hands off. I'm flying in literally hands off manner. So the plane is just perfectly trimmed and it's just flying itself. And there I have the RSBN. So. This is telling me like how far am I from my airport, which is 24 kilometers now. Let's check actually, I might have set it to the wrong frequency. This is a knee board, so I can just check it. Radio, Orbit, RSBN, Caucasus. is, ah, I should have set to channel 13, apologies. Yep, 13, channel 13. Okay, why aren't you climbing? Because I just went hands off and you decided to descend. Okay, that's fine. Let's go to about 10 meters a second. That should be a good climb rate. Okay, I'm gonna cheat and use the F10 map because I do not know where those planes are. Okay, so they went to the north. Okay. So we're gonna try to turn to catch them. If we don't catch them, we'll just go back to base. I still have to tweak this mission. I'm 
so we can go by like 300 should be fine and let's use the SAU stabilize SAU is basically your automatic pilot okay they're about okay well ground control interceptors already tell me that these guys are about 100 kilometers away on a heading 302, so I guess about right 300 was about the right heading to go. And my current altitude in feet is not that high, it's 3000 meters times 3. I don't know exactly, I have to check like this. I'm at 27,000, so okay, I need to go low. I'll disengage the SAU and descend a bit. Uh, the, the deal with the MiG-21's radar is it can only look forward and a bit up, so you cannot adjust the radar elevation. So interception is a bit tricky. I mean, this was always meant to kill bombers, not anything else. It was point defense aircraft. And... Okay, I think we're, that's about right. Stabilize the SAU. So this says we're about what seven thousand three hundred meters. Okay, that's that's about, yeah, I'm about right. Two thousand twenty-four. Stabilize. Altitude hold. Okay. Now it's going to stabilize. Uh, it was off. Hello, viewer. How's it going? I'm just uh, mucking around with this this bird, so nothing really si serious today, but just fun. And this is the bird. Okay, let's put the radar scope on. Nothing on the radar. Let's go back to standby. And those guys are somewhere ahead. So they're about... 290 at the moment. I'm gonna turn off the SAU. SAU again automatic pilot and turn a little bit to the, to the left. I don't have ground control working, uh, ground control interception working. So. Okay, they're way off to my left. The SAU always does this, I do not know why, but well, it, it, 23,000, a bit too low, radar to stand by, I'm going to turn off the SAU and go after them manually, so let's see. I don't see them visually, my monitor also has a very, very bad resolution, so... I have to sit like this to look at the radar, so... Ah, there they are, found them. There we go. Now I'm gonna 
put them centered. And like I'm gonna stabilize the plane. Okay, let's center, put them dead center. But the main, the main goal is to keep them on the uh, center of the radar scope. I'm gonna move my target designation cursor up and lock up the first one and I think I'm gonna engage the second one with heat seekers. They're definitely getting closer. They're about 20 kilometers away now. Yeah, this has a very short range radar, but it has a radar, so it's actually better than the MiG-19's radar. Okay, let it, let it enter the TDC gate. Well, I'll call it a gate. I don't know if that's a correct term. Okay, one of them is locked up, and the radar has has the, the paper on the gun side. is literally dead center on him. Now I'm going to accelerate to attack speed to make a joke like that, and let's see if we can shoot down the bird. Pilot 1 should be a radar guided missile, the others are... Uh, heat seekers. I have two heat seekers, two radar guided. Okay. So, so the, the closer I get, we will see some vertical bars coming on the edges of the radar uh, line. So when those exceed the uh, empty spaces in the center, that means we're in range, I will wait to get them to wait for them to get to about halfway between the empty spaces and the actual symbology on the Uh, target symbology, I'm sorry, and then I'm gonna launch, so... I mean, he's locked now, there's literally, like, he's, he's, there's no escape pod. And these are just very simple AI targets, they won't do much to evade. The whole thing is to see if I remember how to use the radar guided missiles on the MiG-21. My speed is about 500. Not true airspeed, but... Yeah, that's the lock tone. That's... Checking my fuel. Target is locked. As you can see, the closer I get him, and the faster I get closer, the lines are just gonna get closer and closer and closer. That's the launch authority, uh, the red light and the radar. It's telling me like, hey, asshole, shoot your weapon. Sorry for the bad language. And Fox 1. I need to keep the radar lock constantly to guide the missile to the target. No boom? Oh, no boom. Okay, I'm gonna slow down, see if I can find them visually. I climbed a bit high, so that was the problem. I'm gonna circle around and see if I can find them again. That's one Fox 1 missile gone. Yeah, I mean, these are very bad missiles. They're, they're good for big targets, like bombers, but not good for uh, small targets. Let's turn it around. I'm uh, flying a bit left-handed now because I have to switch the weapon pylon. I have not... Uh, okay, that's... AOA is too big. Okay, let's... Not get the AOA too big.
gentler turn. really bad at turning in this because I keep pulling pulling the stick quite hard so I'm gonna I'm gonna recover okay let's recover that AOA stable again 10 degree away I'm gonna trim the nose down a bit and let's see if I can catch those guys again okay there we are well wow, caught him that was that was easy but am I going after the right target that's the question no I'm not that's the AWAX. And the AWAX is going which way? Yeah. Let's undesignate. I'll just break the visually break the lock. Ready to stand by. Trying not to pull too much AOA on this. And I'm gonna climb again. I'm really bad at this, I know, but those guys are just ahead. When I reach about one and one ton of fuel, I'm gonna head home because I need fuel to land, so. Radar on. Nothing on radar. Wait up, stand by. Hello viewer, how's it going? Hello more viewers, how are you guys doing? nice well I mean it's Saturday why wouldn't you be doing well eh okay now let's see my altitude is well about 5,000 meters okay the other planes are 25,000 feet uh, no not the first time uh, I've played it before, it's just, uh, well, I find it very, it's, it's a bit challenging. I do like it, I actually love it, but 
I'm, I'm also, I have bad habits of yanking the stick many times and I end up pulling mini G's and so on. And I get AOA too, too much and then, well, of course, it starts dropping out of the sky. And I'm still, I mean, I'm flying at 10, 10 degrees AOA already and it, I can feel it it's slow. And I have the tendency of pulling on the stick. Okay, well, I'm not going to find those other planes anymore. I don't know where they are. I don't really have... Uh, for me, this was my this was my first, I think. Yeah, this was my first, first, first jet. First, uh, well, fully interactive jet because, well, don't ask me why. I just picked it up and never looked back. I have the F eighteen also and the F sixteen, but sometimes it's it's good. To go back to more basic hands-on controls. I mean, this thing has an autopilot and everything, but it's just not the same. And I'm pulling way too much AOA because my brakes are open. Why are my brakes open? Oh boy. I was wondering what the hell is wrong with this plane. I don't uh, Yeah, I don't think I'm going to find them anymore. They're probably somewhere else. I again, I don't have ground control radar to help me. I'm just flying alone because I'm a lone wolf as usual, so Okay, let's see. I, I cannot find them. And visually, my resolution is way too low to, to see them. Well, I, I ought to head back. I don't have fuel anymore to, to stay up here. I've done it yesterday and I ran out of fuel. So, I'll just head back to, to Kutaisi. Okay, radar standby. Radar off. Yeah, it is, but you know, it's a. I think it's a. It's a good plane. It's it's a well made module. Sometimes I'm I'm like literally nailing it, and um, I'm like spot on with it. Other times I fly like I'm drunk. So. <laughs> just set it on autopilot for now so I can set my RSB in for landing
think I can just go about 90% on the RPM. It's banking a bit to the right because it's asymmetrical load. So that's a bit harder to deal with. I'll just fly it manually. Screw it. Much more fun to fly manually anyway. Now landing is my, big, my biggest problem with this. Uh, I land it, of course, sometimes really well, but other times I'm really bad at landing it. Okay, I have, what, 74 kilometers, 73 to the base. I have to say one thing I really loved about this when I learned it had actually had the RSBN, which is very similar to a VOR or TACAN. Well, more like a TACAN, I think, because it uses fixed channels. So that was really awesome when I first learned about it. I was like, what? This Russian, Russian uh, rust bucket actually has a pretty good radio navigation system. I was, I was baffled, really. Uh, but that was many years back when I first learned it. I mean, I I use RSBN now, like, if I need to use it, I use it. It's, it's, it's also not difficult to use. But Also, as far as I understood, it actually has better range than TACAN stations. The ground stations actually have better range than the RSBN stations. The funky part was, actually, uh, you can have landing RSPN and navigational RSPN. So basically you can have a station for both landing and... Uh, I haven't tried uh, air combat maneuvers with it, I have to admit. Well, that, that's actually something to put on my, my to-do list. Try air combat maneuvers. So, it turn, so it's a good turner, you say. Well, I, that's something I, I should remember. Okay. Turn towards Kutaisi, 40 kilometers away, and we're gonna start our descent. Okay, well, that sounds promising. Thirty-eight kilometers. Okay, let's start our descent. That's about 20 miles. That sounds pretty decent, actually. I mean, I've played in some PvE multiplayer missions where the MiG-21s were actually the biggest problem because they were sneaky little buggers. Okay, so we're getting close. 20 kilometers. I'll have to do a spiral descent here because... 
85% gas. See if I can intercept the radial correctly. Uh huh, I see. Hmm. I think the Mirage had something like that. Like the inhibitor for the air to air. When you went to dogfight mode, you could just set, set that and Yeah, the Mirage was the second jet I ever bought after the MiG-21. And then I think it was the, the A-10 and the Vigan, but yeah. I actually love ground pounding, I'm not much of an air-to-air -air combat person, but eh, well, you know, I'm trying to learn that as well. After three years of just bombing bombing things to, to oblivion. Yeah, I mean, it's... I mean, uh, I've had other people who told me the exact same thing about it, that it's extremely dangerous in close, close range, basically within visual range fighting, fighting. Well, I guess I'm going to have to fly a pattern.
my only quirk I guess with the 21 is the low fuel capacity it's they're really really low on fuel usually you always need to pick up some bags with you Like, without bags, you're literally... Well, you have a few hundred kilometers, then you're, you're done. But, otherwise, it's a good plane. This would be extremely scary if it had an air-to-air -air refuel system. 21 just extending its range. And of course, it was not part of the Russian philosophy to give them that. I mean, this plane wants to kill you. Yep. I mean, this has drop tanks also, but they're not very big. What, they had, they're what, 400 and... 450 or 900 or 800 liters? They're really small. That's, I don't even know what it is in gallons. Then again, I'm European, I use metric system, so. Yeah, sorry, I went a bit quiet. I'm just trying to land it. I have it. This is the, this is the the killer part for the MiG-21 for me. I 
I guess most people who fly it find landing with it a bit difficult. Ah, I need to do my key bindings correctly. Gear down. Flaps down. Okay, that's the outer marker. Okay. Let's not crash. Let's not do a controlled crash. Okay, 10, 10 degrees AOA should be fine. marker. The visibility is very crap. I'm just gonna try to keep this heading and hope for the best. Okay, I pulled back a bit there. Okay, well, well better than... Okay, shoot open. That was a really bad landing. Brakes open. Eh, I broke the main landing gear. How badly is it broken? Well, it's not too badly broken, but... Last, not as good as last time, but yeah, there it is. Well, anyway, thanks for tuning in, whoever tuned in. I'm actually gonna head out for a bit since I do have to do some things. I have a light life outside of DCS. I don't live in uh, airplanes the whole day. Uh, but yeah, thanks for tuning in, and feel free to tune back. I might post more MiG-21 content. I definitely would like to practice it more. So, specifically, well, I'm going to start with air-to-air -air combat. I've, I, I dropped bombs in it far too many times to, to actually remember. But yeah, thanks for tuning in and thanks for keeping me company. This was actually uh, very welcome to see more people actually tuning into my stream and enjoying the MiG-21. And people, if you wanted to try, well, 1960s Warbird, well, Warbird, well, I don't know if it's a Warbird, it's a Warbird, it was in Vietnam, um, definitely get your hands on the MiG-21, even though the BIS is actually a later version of it, it's from the early 70s, but... Yeah, anyway, thanks for tuning in. Remember to follow, like, subscribe, comment, whatever you prefer. And have yourselves a good weekend. And I'll uh, see you in the next one. Fly safe.